Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doodly doodly do my <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com, patreon.com slash uopod, and all the YouTubes, X's, and Spotify's we can imagine. Did you have a good weekend watching some fights? You watched Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, if you're amongst the 65 million people that watch it on Netflix, maybe with interruptions, maybe without. Maybe it crashed on you, maybe it didn't, I don't know. But we saw Mike Tyson's ass. (laughs) And then the next night on Saturday night, we saw John Jones basically fight in his underwear. So it was a, it it was what America's all about or what it's supposed to be all about. And I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. If you look at John Jones here um, in the, in the dying embers of this fight, John Jones is basically, you know, He's got his shorts rolled up and tucked into his underwear, and he's got the slit shorts here that are cut up and showing his boxers. And basically, John Jones looks like a big naked baby out there beating the crap out of a, a, a big dumb oaf in Stipe Miocic. Near the end of the third round, he finished that. And of course, he does the Trump dance, ended up giving Trump the belt. Trump looks super happy with all the other people there. There's Elon and Kid Rock and RFK and Tulsi Gabbard, and the whole crew was pretty much there. But John Jones, you know, when he, especially when it came out, so you can see the left leg, he had it tucked into his, the bottom of his boxers as well. He looked like a big naked baby fighting. And then we move on over to Mike Tyson. And what's your, I assume you, were, you live on the internet and you saw this, but if you did it, this was put out by Netflix themselves, by the way, on social media. Netflix said, you know, let's lean into this viral moment here. And this was right before the fight, before Jake Paul had a stupidly long intro where he came in in a convertible going half a mile per hour. This was before in the locker room where Mike Tyson's asked his prediction. He says, vicious win, and they say, thank you, and maybe you weren't paying attention. He kisses that guy on the cheek. And then you get to see his 58-year-old rear end. (laughs) Quickly zoom in. Uh, Let's see that one more time, in case you needed to really soak it in. I love you, I love you too. And then there's his rear end. You know, they had to have known that he was naked under his jock strap. I mean, the cameraman was assumedly in the locker room, and we're going to watch this as many times until you tell me to stop. You have to assume that they're all in the locker room, and all these guys behind can see that Mike Tyson is not wearing anything. He's just wearing his jock strap, and he's naked. How many people saw that, and they're like, wait a minute. Now, if you're like me... And your father basically is Mike Tyson, that being a 60-year-old man who's on steroids or possibly stem cells and is very soft-spoken but very ferocious at the same time. That's just what my dad is like. Uh, Probably the same size as Mike Tyson, a little bit smaller. But as soon as this happened, my dad called me. He called me to make sure that I saw Mike Tyson's ass. Mike Tyson's one of his heroes. Uh, he called me last night again to tell me that he got to, he, he had the privilege of seeing Mike Tyson in the late 80s and he paid 10 bucks to watch it in a bar. He started off by saying, sounding like he met Mike Tyson, but what he actually meant was he paid money to watch a Tyson fight in the bar. And my dad calls me, that clock on the, on the image there says 920. So it was probably about 921 
where my dad called me and he said, did you just see that? And I said, you mean Mike Tyson's ass? And he said, yes. And I said, yes, I did. We had a very good moment. And, you know, isn't this what America is about? Isn't this what we saw flourish this weekend? We saw both shameless marketing in the sense that people were actually convinced that Jake Paul and Mike Tyson would be very competitive. Now it was for the first maybe round and a half, but we all saw what happened for the rest. Don't want to spoil it for you. We saw the genius marketing ploy at work on a giant program like Netflix or a giant platform like that. And then the next, the next night we see extreme violence and patriotism. John Jones saying he's the first Christian, you know, the biggest Christian star in sports, uh, the biggest Christian UFC champion. He loves America. He loves Trump. And we get all that. And then zoomed out of that, what we really have is naked black guy fighting white oaf in boxing. And then we have naked black guy fighting white oaf in UFC. And that's really what America's about. If you were to say in 2024, what can bring Americans together, you'd probably say a naked guy fighting a dumb guy in front of millions of people and then saying how much he loves American Christianity. Isn't that really what we've all been yearning for? That and the ability to call things gay? I think that those are the things when put together, 65 million people will watch, will complain about it, will say it might have been rigged one way or the other, will say it was a waste of time. We might even say the technology was garbage upon which we watched it. But we will also say, man, am I glad that naked babyish looking guy who's gigantic fought that dumb sleepy looking white guy. It, I'm glad it happened. That's what we will all say. We all got together right before Thanksgiving. If you think about it. this was a week or so before Thanksgiving, people got together to watch naked men fight uh, other oafish men so that we could complain about it on the internet and in person together. That's what America's about. That's what freedom is. And I'll be damned if you try to take it away from me. Don't try it. Because if you do, I've got Kid Rock on my side. I've got RFK Jr. on my side. I've got the whole Trump family, Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk. We've got everything covered. We've got sports, violence, rocket ship level intelligence, Alleged scientist. I don't know what RFK Jr. actually is. And all sorts of other athletes in the background and actors and everything. That's what we've got defending ourselves. And we couldn't possibly want it another way. So that's that. I hope you all had fun watching Mike Tyson. Now, on the other side of things, what happened is they're having a reckoning over at the DNC and the Democrat Party. They're having... You know, everybody in the media come out and say, how come you lied to us? How come the party's so bad? How could it have gone so wrong? You've got these YouTubers like uh, Kyle Kalinske and these other, you know, brain idiots saying their viewership is going down. Tra -la -la. Isn't it a shame when people who are boosted by the algorithm start to lose their subscribers? I have no sympathy for that. Just go ahead and check out uh, my reach capabilities on this platform. But they're talking about how the populace in general says they've been let down by the Democratic Party, who told them they were told them they were going to win, told them everything's awesome, told them Hitler fascism was coming into play. It never happened. You know, a large mandate, popular vote victory and everything. And now, you know, we have to turn to our greatest leaders. We have to turn to our greatest minds of the Democratic Party. We have to turn to our most innovative thought-provoking personalities, and who better to do that than Alexand Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? Um, and she has made the first move, I, th I think, in the direction of she's going to remove her pronouns from her Twitter profile. She's making big moves. Let's hear about this from Fox. Starting off with AOC, she has apparently removed she, her pronouns from her ex profile. Um, and she also asked this, she wanted to ask her people why you voted for her and Trump. Watch. If you voted for Donald Trump and me, or 
if you voted for Donald Trump and voted Democratic down ballot, I would really love to hear from you. Just tell me what your thought process was. All right, well, people said, oh, by the way, she has 21 million followers on just Instagram and Twitter combined. So that's I mean, amazing. It's kind of a lot. That's kind yeah. of. Well, also, and if you remember two years ago, she put them up because her progressive followers were like, why don't you have pronouns in your bio? But look, I think the woke tide is over. Americans are tired of yes. this pronoun nonsense, this transgender nonsense. If you look at the best ad that Donald Trump ran during the election cycle, yeah. it was Kamala Harris is for they. So aside from the country music twang and everything that's going on here, we have AOC using her baby voice. If you voted for me, is she still going to talk like this when she's 50 or when she's a grandmother? If you voted for me, she's doing the baby talk because she spends all her time on her phone. She thinks this is what men want because it's what the creepiest section of men want. If you're going to talk like this, I'm a baby. I'm 13 years old. Um, so she takes her pronouns out of her bio, perhaps signaling to people that they should be less woke. You know, she talks about her self being a free thinker and being super progressive and everything. She's not. She's knee deep. Well, you might even say balls deep into the machine. So she basically takes her memo and, and does what she's told. But that was on, you know, that report was on the 17th. So maybe she did that on the 15th or the 14th. Here is an example you know, here's what her her Twitter profile looked like before. She had she, her at the end. She's people funded, no lobbyists. We all believe that, obviously. And then afterwards, she does not have anything in there. But what she was saying just a few days prior to that was completely opposite. She was saying that, uh, you know, people don't want to take stock in a person like Kamala Harris because she's a fake progressive. They actually want a person who does put pronouns in their name, who does, you know, support alleged receding trans rights or whatever that means. So within a few business days, AOC completely changed her opinion. Seemingly, let's see what she had to say before that. Again, this was before the pronouns were removed. Personally, I don't. I think that a lot of voters... The question is, sorry, do you buy the argument that woke loses elections? Example saying Latin X or Latinx. This is her answering questions on her Instagram, um, pretending like she's not, you know, a 13-year-old at heart. Personally, I don't. I think that a lot of voters really don't like fake people, and they're sick and tired of fake politicians. And she's also wearing glasses here that she, you obviously don't need to, be, to use your phone unless you're Mike Tyson's age, you don't need glasses to read your phone or to see what's on your phone if you're 34 years old or whatever AOC is. Just putting that out there. And so what I actually think is worse is saying something you don't believe. And so if during the entire time in campaign season, you're saying that you're down with trans people or like the LGBT community, and then you lose an election, and then the next day you say all that stuff was wrong. I actually think what people are more upset about is someone was doing something they didn't believe and just saying something. Like, if you actually weren't about that life, why did you campaign as though you were? Is she on the toilet or something? I don't get what's happening there. But she's saying Kamala Harris campaigned as if she's a progressive, and now they're saying she's not, which is true. You know, I mentioned Kyle Kalinske, I'll mention uh, Chank, all these people. I mean, Chank, not so much. He's been shitting on the Democrats a lot. But a lot of the left-wing people have been saying, you know, Destiny and all these guys who just lie all the time. They think because they think you're sm they're, you're not as smart as them. They say, you know, the Democrats never actually ran on being woke at all. They never said anything about being woke and they've never supported transgenderism. This was never a part of the conversation with Kamala Harris. Um, AOC, who's in the party, says that they were pretending to do it. So there goes that argument right there. Um, she says that they were doing it, but they weren't doing it sincerely enough. So AOC has a problem with people pretending to be woke and super far left and having weird gender ideology at the forefront of their ideas list. And then she goes on a couple days later 
and takes the pronouns out of her bio. Now, I don't know the exact reason why she did this, but from a progressive point of view, if you do something like that, you are a piece of trash. If you go against the grain at all, they say that you're committing violent acts against them through your words or through your non-words in this case. So for AOC to go and say that Kamala Harris flip-flopped just days after losing the election from pretending to be woke to saying she's not woke at all, which is true what they've done, she then went did this and did the same thing once the memo came into her hands. So it's it's interesting that she just completely... Well, it's interesting that she might be doing this from the toilet and she's wearing her glasses in there because she wants to seem... If you see her eyes directly without some sort of obstruction or obscuring, you will see that she's insane. And I can preface that or I can qualify that with other things she said in the last week, which was that, you know, illegal immigrants or undocumented migrants, as they are, are in danger because the Trump administration has this strange idea that being an illegal immigrant is a crime in itself. She said people need to uh, make a plan just in case ICE comes for them. So they need to make a plan for their children and they need to make a plan for for where they're going to go and if they're going to get out of the country and all these other things. And she acts like that's not weird. That's not a fugitive sort of thing. She's acting like they're unjustly being treated as fugitives, even if they come on t- into the country illegally. And I was just sitting there watching that video, imagining what if you were to talk about something, uh, a different crime like that? What if you were, <laughs> what if you were to say that about somebody who robbed Walmart? Oh, I, I, I know if, you, it, okay. If you rob Walmart, there's this weird thing happening in the country where Republicans in the Trump administration, uh, think you're a criminal. So make a plan in case the cops come to your house and arrest you for stealing that air fryer or blow up mattress and make sure there's a plan for your kids to be hidden because they're also there stealing from Walmart with you just in case this crazy Trump administration comes by and wants to enforce actual laws upon you. This is AOC stance. So, you know, people will post these things like AOC is right for once. AOC is actually reasonable. Maybe she's closer to us. She's still insane. Take off the glasses. We can see she's still saying things like, you know, sneaking into a country shouldn't be illegal. And she's taking it upon. She's, she's one of these people that she will post to X and Twitter And then simultaneously say it harbors too much misinformation and disinformation. It's evil and it's run by fascists and all this stuff. Another person who was doing this is Joy Reid, the bald lady from MSNBC. She announced that she's getting off of X, which is the 17 year olds move of this platform is too toxic. There's too much criticism. I need to get off of it. And then, of course, be back a week later. Don Lemon's getting off of it. He says it's because of um, a terms of service change where they said They're going to move any lawsuits involving X from West Texas to North Texas where it's more Republican. And he thinks that's unfair, which is interesting because I think we all know that Democrats would never try to bring up charges or court cases in jurisdictions that favor them. We know that would never happen. So, you know, we're losing Don Lemon. We're losing Joy Reid. Figure out which one's more masculine, I dare you. Or more bald. And AOC is just, you know, she continues to be a source for strength and inspiration if you're a crazy girl who's pretending to be a 12-year-old from the hood or something like that, even though she's a rich New Yorker. So that was very interesting, I thought. Just the the real yin and the yang <laughs> of, <laughs> of, the, <coughs> oh God, of the Democratic Party right now. I want to move to something a bit more serious. It has to do with... Hold on. So serious, I need a sip of water. It has to do with the NCAA volleyball players um, facing the transgender athlete. They are suing their school and their conference. Written by me, of course. There is the wonderful transgender athlete with another girl, with a girl, looking at him being like... (laughs) NCAA volleyball players filed a lawsuit over male athlete on women's team after transgender participation policy 
is revealed. So they're making Title IX enforcement amendment violations, alleging that the Mountain West Conference and San Jose State University were seeking to punish people for giving their opinion about a man on their team. And then the title, that's the first amendment part. And then the title nine part is ensuring that women have, you know, like safe athletics and access to athletics, which are now being violated by having a man play on there. Now you might be saying, Andrew, since when are you a feminist? Since when, since when are you standing up against a patriarchy? My answer to that has been always, (laughs) but when it comes to actually this stuff happening, where it's a guy playing on a women's team and being like, what? What do you mean? I actually do have a problem with that because it's a guy picking on women in, in the in the sense that like a 10-year-old boy would pick on a 10-year-old girl. It's just not fair and, you know, maybe he doesn't know any better. Nearly a dozen double NCAA athletes and one coach are suing the Mountain West Conference over alleged First Amendment violations that stem from a male athlete playing against women. Officials at San Jose State University are also named in the lawsuit. That alleges the female athletes were subject to a new transgender participation policy that thought that sought to suppress the free speech rights of women athletes. Now, this is their words in this lawsuit that was pumped out uh, by the girls and a legal team and a lawyer um, working with, I think, independent counsel on women's sports icons. It's called icons. Independent counsel on sports. (laughs) Why can't I remember the name of it? Independent Council on Women's Sports. I'm right. Icons. I I was missing the C for some reason. Okay, so this is really zoomed out. But I wanted you to... It's hard to see it from here, so we're going to have to go to the regular page, I think. Whoops a doodle. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to bring this to your attention as one particularly egregious part of what they are saying is this, you know, you're not allowed to complain about transgender athletes poli- policies. So the Mountain West Conference um they they called it a don't ask, don't tell policy. Mountain West Conference transgender participation pact policy. So the Mountain West Conference Transgender Participation Policy includes a paragraph that states this. Any questions regarding the status or eligibility of a transgender student athlete shall be directed to the certifying institution, not the conference nor the NCAA. Given the privacy considerations involved, the certifying institution is not obligated to proactively notify the conference or other institutions regarding the status of a transgender student athlete. So they're saying, don't come to the NCAA We don't want to deal with it. Don't even go to your conference. They don't want to deal with it. Complain to your school, who will probably not deal with it, but the school does not have to tell its conference, in this case, the Mountain West Conference. You know, you've got the Big 12, the Pac-10, this sort of thing, the Big 10. They don't have to notify anyone that there's a male playing on their team because they're saying this is a private matter. It's a private matter to know that there <laughs> there's a guy playing on your team if you're a woman, apparently. An opposing institution wishing to confirm the status of a student athlete may inquire, and it shall be the discretion of the certifying institution whether or not to provide pertinent information. That's another disturbing point. So a school is allowed to ask, hey, are there any guys on your team? Are you allowing a transgender athlete on the women's volleyball team who, you know, is going to spike the ball allegedly in my daughter's face and break her nose? They're allowed to ask that, but the school can just say, hey, um, sorry, we don't have to tell you anything. The certifying institution may simply respond that it is it has ensured all of its student athletes are eligible prior to competition. So they give them an answer right inside the policy. They don't just say hey, answer the way you see fit. They say the certifying, the school, they can simply say that it's none of your <laughs> your effing business, right? And then it continues, the NCAA will not entertain inquiries or challenges regarding the eligibility of transgender student athletes. So what they're saying is you can't, you literally can't ask the NCAA about whether or not you're playing against a man, a man is on your team, a man is on your daughter's team. 
so this is what these girls are facing right now. And we and if you didn't know, one of the this woman is an assistant coach uh, named Melissa Beatty Smoose at the school with the boy on the team, with the man on the team. These are adult women. And she got suspended because she alleged, of course, this is all hearsay, Your Honor. I am not a lawyer. But she alleged that the male athlete on San Jose State conspired with another team so that he could try to injure, have a girl on his team injured. So the plan, the alleged plan, possibly fictitious plan was because there was an investigation by the conference. They said nothing happened. But the allegation was that Blair Fleming, the volleyball player, conspired with, I think it was a Colorado State player who was opposite him on the court. They got together, apparently, allegedly, and said, I'll move out of the way so that when you spike the ball, you hit this other girl in the face. And then the other girl that they're talking about is Brooke Slusser. And why would they want to target Brooke Slusser? Because Brooks spoke out, including to people like me, Fox News, and everybody else. She spoke to us and said, I don't agree with this. So the story goes, allegedly, impermissible evidence in court, Your Honor, that they were conspiring to try to get this girl hurt by, you know, a, a, a really strong athlete on the other side. That's the story. But we also talked to Sia Lili from Nevada. She and the other based Hawaiian girls are against this. You can go back and ch- uh, check out my episode with her. It's uh, a few episodes back, so we interviewed Sia. We've also interviewed Brooke, and that's Nevada. There's also several girls from Wyoming you can, sit, you can see up the right-hand side here. Uh, Macy Boggs, that's a hell of a name. Sierra Grizzle, these names are fantastic. Jordan Sandy, Caitlin Van Kirk, Kirsten, I'm guessing they're sisters. And then another Hawaiian girl here. These these are great names, Sue Guy. Um, these girls are all joining the lawsuit against the school and the conference. And of course, we support such a thing um, because it's insane, right? It's insane that it's not only insane that it's happening, it's insane that the conference would allegedly say that you can't complain about it. And if you do, if you do have any questions, uh, sorry, sorry, you don't get to know. <laughs> That'd be like a sports league saying like, you don't get to know, uh, you think Barry Bonds is on human growth hormones. Do you really? Sorry, that's none of your business. You don't get to know if somebody has an unfair advantage. This is just volleyball. This is just top level college athletics here. You don't get to know if somebody's cheating. Sorry about that. That's offensive. That's an offensive question. I want to end on something also very important, and this is a uh, proposed immigration policy from the People's Party in Canada. Now, you might be wondering, why is this important? Because as we move closer and closer to a federal election here in Canada, people are pointing to the United States and Trump's victory about ending illegal immigration, getting the wall completed, uh, closing the border up, deporting millions upon millions of people um, who are there illegally. Now, in this country, they let people in legally en masse. Over two million people in two years is one of the figures. So as people march forward and see that Pierre Polyev, the conservative leader, is likely to win the election, it's been likely that he's going to win it for at least a year now, but we might have to wait till next October or so for another federal election for the prime minister. People are thinking this is going to put pressure on him to come up with some sort of immigration plan because currently the plan is just build more homes. It doesn't matter how many people come in if you build more homes, they say. We don't need wider roads and we don't need to all of a sudden farm a lot for food and milk and eggs. We all of a sudden don't need more social services and hospitals and schools. Just build the homes. So obviously that's foolish and there's going to be building, rightfully so, an increasing amount of pressure on them to come up with some sort of plan to get people out of this country because that's the only way that things are going to work. And it's not a race thing. It's not an ethnicity thing. If there was 2 million people from Scandinavia here and all of a sudden our housing prices doubled, which they have, and we didn't have roads to support it like we don't have. I don't know if you've driven to Toronto recently. Rush hours at all times now. 
basically there's just too many people here temporary foreign worker status student visa status people that just overstay people that shouldn't be here because they're they've expanded the eligibility of immigrants you know in 2017 Justin Trudeau made it so you could bring in sick relatives from foreign nations so basically come to our country and we'll pay for their health care insane plan right so there's going to be growing calls of sending people back to their countries no matter what word you want to whatever you want to do you want to call that mean that's fine you want to say we're just limiting um immigration we're putting it back to a merit point system or whatever it is it all results in having fewer people in the country from over, from different nations so that's what people are going to be calling for i guarantee you because people are calling for that privately right now there's not a single person you talk to that does not think there's too many people from india and nations in that region in this country that's it i know indian people who say it <laughs> who have been here for a long time i know native canadian people who say it i know black and white people who say it and somebody commented that's far right so if you if you think everybody from every race is far right that's fine with you we don't care what you have to say anymore but this is the people's party people party put out a plan maxine bernier's party if you're unfamiliar with them and i want to note exactly what they're saying because i believe this will put pressure on the conservative party of canada to come up with a better plan that more people agree to because everybody is talking about how there's too many people in this country the costs of living are too high the ro there's not enough roads there's not enough uh infrastructure to go around so people are saying across the board we need to drastically lower immigration so this is what their page says immigration imposing moratorium and deporting illegals the issue as they say the primary aim of canada's immigration policy should be to economically benefit canadians and canada as a whole it should not be used to forcibly change the culture character and social fabric of of our country it should not put excessive financial burdens on the shoulders of canadians in the pursuit of humanitarian goals However, both the Liberals and Conservatives have supported an irresponsible and unsustainable increase in immigration levels, which has led to an explosion of social, economic, and cultural problems. They're using mass immigration as a policy tool to pander for votes among immigrant communities. 100% right. And everybody who lives here knows that there is an ongoing conflict between Indian immigrants um, and Sikh immigrants. They could both be from India, but they're different belief sets, right? And... There's street fights. There's, you know, people waving flags of that nobody's ever heard of before. Flags from places that nobody's ever seen. People who are demanding a new country in India, a state of Khalistan, which most people have not heard of. But these are things that are now cultural problems in Canada that have been brought overseas through mass migration. That's what it's referring to. Everybody knows this is happening. So we'll skip the facts section there. We'll go down to the plan that they're proposing. Canada's immigration policy can benefit Canadians only if we welcome the right kind and the right number of immigrants and non-permanent residents. It should prioritize our economic interests and can be calibrated in a way that does not jeopardize Canadian values and the maintenance of our national identity. The People's Party, as a government will, impose a moratorium on new permanent residents for as many years as necessary until the housing crisis has cooled down. Um, substantially lower the number of permanent residents Canada accepts every year to between 100,000 and 150,000, depending on economic and other circumstances. Now I would, um, personally, I would suggest even lower than that because we've taken in enough immigrants for 20 years based on our previous numbers, which were around this. So if you're taking in 2 million people in two years, that's t about 20 years worth of immigration. So I think we can halt it for somewhere around 10 to 15 years. They also want to reform the immigration system back to a point system and related programs to accept lar a larger proportion of economic immigrants with the right skills in high value added sectors while substantially lowering the number of immigrants accepted under the family re reunification program, including abolishing the program for parents and grandparents. 100% true. You are allowed to bring people over elderly people, who have no particular benefit to the country besides, you know, wanting to be nice. And then we end up paying for their health care. And by we, I mean any citizen of Canada pays for the health care of relatives who people of people who just got here. Doesn't make any sense. Tighten the selection process. Um, 
that's increasing resources for our secret service and our, uh, you know, our federal police program, the Department of Immigration. They also want to deport illegal immigrants, including foreign temporary workers, foreign students, asylum seekers, visitors, and others who are staying in Canada after their visas have expired. Huge problem here. I know in the United States, it's mostly illegal immigration that is the problem, but ours is people overstaying their visas far more than it is people just breaking into the country. So we need to get rid of that as well. Except fewer foreign workers and students, except fewer refugees. Make birth tourism illegal. Withdraw from the Global Compact for Migration, which is take Canada out of the UN's Global Compact for Migration, signed by the Liberal government in 2018. And that's it. Now, birth tourism being illegal, that's a great idea. And, you know, fewer refugees. We've done this a lot. It hasn't had a net benefit. We should stop involving ourselves in wars. We should stop doing things that cause refugees. And also there's the idea that these people aren't going to the re to the proper places to gain refugee status which is the next closest country where you're supposed to go instead of us taking them from across the world and fewer foreign workers and students is a big issue because these are jobs for people who may have lost a job recently elderly people who are who, who ran out of money young people who are just getting to the job market for the first time these things have completely been taken over by immigrants and you can say that it's canadians fault this is what the argument people use is Canadians don't want to do these jobs or we don't have people to do these jobs. Completely untrue. Any person who looks for a job these days has trouble finding a job because people from other countries are hiring their own people and then bringing in more temporary foreign workers. So you'll see some companies like Tim Hortons face huge backlash because of the vast amount of temporary foreign workers they've taken in, whereas places like McDonald's have far less. Um, you know, uh, Walmart has a ton. You can go into a Walmart. You won't hear any of the staff members speak English. That's a problem. And we can call it mean. We can call it z xenophobic bigotry if we want. Nobody cares about that anymore. Nobody wants to hear these nonsense answers. Nobody wants to not live in reality because the fact is every single person, no matter their race or ethnicity, can see what's happening here. And it's called bringing in people to vote for you in the future. You want to bring in more of your voters so that the Liberal Party never has to be challenged in an election. That's what they want because people who are brought to a country by a government that gives them everything they want and need are going to vote for those people. So that's the issue as it stands. I think this is a great immigration plan. I would go even further. That's me. But this is a great start. It's better than anything we have in place. And I think it's going to put pressure on the conservative party here, who is seemingly afraid to talk about it. They don't want to be mean. They don't want to rustle any feathers. But it's just normal. It's just normal to notice that there's way too many people here and the infrastructure and the system can't handle it. The housing um, market can't handle it. So it's a simple add and subtract thing here. We have this many houses... We have this many people. We have this many hospitals, this many people, schools. You can't build, rebuild the roads and the entire infrastructure in a few years. I'm sorry. You've got to change the system a little bit. Thanks for watching. If you like anything I had to say, don't forget to share and subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, leave us a review. We love the five-star reviews like your favorite Uber driver. I'm bringing it to you hot and fresh every week. Shout out Mike Tyson. Shout out Jake Paul. John Jones, I love all you guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. AOC, add it back in. She's got to bring back the pronouns. We liked it when she had the pronouns. We liked it a lot. We can't have her not having pronouns. When AOC removes the pronouns, things are not looking good. Turn it up, Jordan.